No, with permaculture, there is no right answer. And my take on permaculture is to design as you go and not spend too much time thinking about what you're going to design. The reason is, is when you do that, when you follow the permaculture 1.0 methodology, and let's call this permaculture 2.0, you lock yourself in a design that may or may not be able to be chained because you think this is what we're going to build and you don't think of um, opportunity as you go. When you design as you go, you learn things. And I want to give you an example of that. You see this, I've been putting in this koala. It's called koala. It's roofing tiles. You can see it over here. There's a roof right there. And it's got the roofing tiles. Well, that's, those are new. These are old. And what I've, what I've done is actually, as I put them in, i am actually put dirt in here and I've actually put clover. So clover is going to grow up in here to keep weeds out. And I'm doing the same thing here. Now, what I discovered as I'm doing this is I found there were a chocker block of worms living next to concrete, which makes sense. Worms like heat, um, and, but they like to get cool too. They don't want to get too hot. They're very sensitive. So the concrete, there's a couple things here. One is the, the gardener who waters here gets water, so there's moisture in this ground. The second thing is the concrete heats up and provides kind of a heat bed for the worms. So there were tons of worms. As I dug, they were just jumping out all over. Well, it got me thinking, and it got me thinking that, you know, these koala are going to be great to surround the beds in because ultimately they're going to do the same thing. I'm going to be watering the beds. These are going to capture heat and create a microclimate around the beds. So worms will gather around these koala that are sunken as heat sinks. You know, if I would have spent the time to design this garden, right, and said, well, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, right, I would never have discovered that opportunity. So the problem is, again, if you follow permaculture 1.0 and do all this design stuff, don't worry about zone 2, don't worry about zone 3, you know, all that zone bullshit. Just deal with what needs to be dealt. I need to cut out, you know, an area that I'm going to establish. I'm establishing the perimeter. As I establish the perim perimeter, I'm thinking, what am I going to do next? And I'm asking myself questions. Why are there worms here? What's going on here in this environment, right? And as a result of that inquiry, that moment-to-moment -moment inquiry, what I'm doing is discovering new opportunities. So don't lock yourself in the designing of permaculture. Design as you go. Start with defining the territory, right? Next, deal with management of water. You want to think about water. Once you get the management done, then you can start thinking about the zones and the beds and everything else that you're doing. Just my take on it, what I call permaculture 2.0. Design as you go. Don't get hung up on the design.